You've heard about Margie, heard about Donna, heard about Susie, but ooh, 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 ooh. I gotta get my old tuxedo pressed. Gotta sew a button on my His unmistakable voice has charmed us for over 50 years, and in addition to his remarkable singing career, he has won critical acclaim as a composer, author, talk show host, drummer, on and on and on. I could really go on. The Velvet Fog joins us this morning, Mr. Mel Torme. Good morning, Mel. Someday, my darling Eileen, somebody is going to billboard me and say hello to me and not say... A velvet, velvet fog. fog. I almost crossed it out. <laughs> I did, you know, because I read. You don't like it. You've been trying to live it down. Why? But it's not even that. It's just that it doesn't really fit the way I sing. You know, I heard that old record of mine that you just played. I made that in 1905. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I must say that uh, I don't sound anything like that anymore. I'm a far more robust singer. I've, I've, I've aged. And consequently, my thank you, ma'am. And my voice has dropped you know, uh, s not octaves, but certainly several notes, so that it, the Velvet Fog appellation just simply doesn't fit. Where did it come from I, in the first place? A disc jockey named Fred Robbins in New York back in 1947 uh, was playing my records off the wall, and he is the guy that named me the Velvet Fog. And in a sense, in those days, it did kind of fit. I was out of a creamy, high voice, light kind of singer, and that uh, just isn't me anymore. So many people have said so many things about you. Ethel Waters, yeah, who you never met, said, I don't remember, what did she say exactly? I would paraphrase phrase it. Oh, she said something about Mel Torme is the only white man who sings with the soul of a black man, which I thought was one of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten. Absolutely. How did she know that? And, well, of course, she did. She heard you. I don't know, Eileen, because I never met her. Mm -hmm. and I wish I had. I thought she was wonderful. Uh, but I was very flattered by that, and Count Basie is another guy that made a, a similar remark. Uh, that's flattering to me. My, I, was, I was born in the, what we call the colored neighborhood of Chicago uh, back during the mid-twenties, and I grew up mainly with black people, colored, whatever you want to call them, uh, people, just people. Uh, for about the first 10 years of my life. You also had someone who used to do some caring for you, who played gorgeous piano. Yeah, yeah, Alberta. I can't, I can't remember Alberta's last name. She was a great, big, heavy-set gal who played piano with an all-girl band in Chicago on the weekends. We had to let her off on the weekends so that she could do this. You grew up much as I did, long on love and short on dough, mm. but with Russian immigrant parents, Betty and Bill, who yep. are still alive. Yeah, not um, good. 90 and 87, is that 90 right? 90 and 87. Uh, who and amazing, by the way. I mean, very totally in control of their faculties. There's no senility. I mean, they're just like... My dad is 90. He looks like he's about 72. He's, he's incredible. He would have had, you say, a great voice. I mean, well, he did. You, music was important to your house. Yeah, very. The whole, the whole house sang. We sang all the time. And uh, I think, you know, it sort of rubs off on you. You get it by some strange process of osmosis. It just yeah. seeps in, and there it is. But you loved it, and you knew enough, and you knew enough songs to go to the Blackhawk at age four and stand up and sing with the orchestra. Yeah, and I became a uh, Monday night feature at the Black Hawk restaurant in Chicago, 15 bucks every Monday night, which was a lot of money oh, yeah. uh, for about six months, and was never out of show business after that. I mean, I was always in it. You were a real child star. In, well, I don't know about star, in Chicago? but I was a child performer. Yeah, but yeah. you worked constantly, didn't you, after yeah, that? Yeah, I sure did. Radio, playing the, uh, the newspaper boy, Jimmy, oh, is yeah. that right? Well, not only Jimmy the Newsboy on a, a soap called Song of the City, but I mean, I did Jack Armstrong, Little Orphan Annie. I did literally every show that ever emanated out of Chicago from about 1934 to about 1940. When my voice changed, I wasn't getting those roles anymore. And by then, I was so immersed in music, really, that I, I didn't care. I wanted to really pursue the musical thing. It's very interesting. You write a lot about caring for your voice. And, and if young people are watching us today, it's an important message. I mean, you never smoked, mm -hmm. you don't drink hard liquor, and you get, a, you get good sleep. Well, except last night. <laughs> <laughs> Too much noise, huh? Yeah, but actually, yeah, that's, that's the panacea for me. Uh, I have never smoked anything of any kind. Well, uh, that, that might have to do with the kid that pinned you down and made you eat a whole pouch of male pouch tobacco, is yeah, that right? Yeah, I broke his brother's nose, and uh, he was the, the brother was in my class, but this kid was about three years older than me, and uh, pinned me down on the parade ground of Shakespeare Grammar School in Chicago and forced uh, about a half package of male pouch tobacco Ugh. down my throat. It was horrible. For the next several months, everything tasted like tobacco. You know, it was awful. Great cure, though. It's all in this book, <laughs> folks. 
<laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to. The title, it wasn't all velvet. It might make people think that, you know, it wasn't a great life. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you mentioned that, Eileen, because if you look very hard, you will see that the word all <laughs> is under. What are you doing hawking a book like this? You know people will buy it. You don't have to do <laughs> no, that. No, actually, the title is not It Wasn't All Velvet. The title is It Wasn't All Velvet. But a lot of it was. Okay. Oh, a lot of it was, and it still is. The, absolutely marvelous. The times that weren't um, were your personal life, basically. Yeah. Um, you, were you a bad picker, or did you just get unlucky with three women that you married? No, I was a good picker. I mean, all three ladies were very beautiful gals, and they were all very bright. Uh, but I think what this book shows, and it's, it's almost beginning to be a primer. That's what people are telling me. They're saying, Jesus is like a primer for people who don't understand about the stresses of the lifestyle of an itinerant singer, somebody who has to travel to earn a living. And I coined a phrase that uh, is not won't go echoing down the corridors of time, but that I think is very apt. I realize after three failed marriages, and of course a great one now, that absence does not make the heart grow fonder. It makes the heart go wander. Huh. And for you or for the well, ladies? Well, actually for the ladies or originally, and then forcibly for me, because uh, I like women, and uh, uh, needless to say, you like the companionship of a gal. And when these marriages did bust apart, uh, I sought female companionship, obviously. We're seeing a shot of you with Marilyn Monroe. She was not one of your companions, really. Well, she was, yes, she but was. It didn't, it, you didn't marry her, obviously. No, no. We kept company, and we, we had a lot of dates together. She was a wonderful gal. I mean, these stories you read about Marilyn Monroe, about being unkempt, and uh, that's a girl that I never saw. I mean, I, she was always... Terrific with me. She Most people say that about her. That's too bad. You, you, a uh, couple of things in your life. I was just reading, I think, Newsweek, or, you're giving Daffy Duck new acclaim these days. Oh, no, he's giving me the acclaim. <laughs> no, I, he's never I'm had his due, has he? Has he? <laughs> now, there's a brand new Warner Brothers cartoon. Uh, it's just out right now called The Night of the Living Duck. Uh, it, it literally kicked off the New York Film Festival, and I was there. I saw it. Okay. And my voice comes out of Daffy Duck's bill. That is great. It is a wish to be consummately desired. <laughs> that is great. It's just and Harry Anderson on uh, Night Court. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, he's a one-man fan club for you, isn't he? Yeah, that's, that's one of those things, Eileen, that, I mean, if you wanted to buy it, and you said, look, here's a million dollars, why don't you do a running gag about me for the series, for, for the complete run of Night Court? You couldn't buy that. Yeah. I just lucked into that with Harry and with Reinhold Wiggy, who who created that series. Yeah, and, well, we've become great friends. I, I mean, mean, we really have the guys. What you see on that show is literally what you get. Let me do a very quick plug for him, too. He's going to be doing The Absent-Minded Professor, I believe, on another network. And uh, just he's, he's, he's a just, delightful He's a magnificent guy. And you say a terrific human being. Uh, looking back, uh, it, good life, basically yeah. a good life. It's the best it's ever been, honest to God, is right now. And you know, if you could have your choice, Eileen, of hitting your peak financially, career-wise, anyway, uh, let's say when you're 30 or even 40, or have your choice hitting it when you're 63. Yeah. I mean, I would pick 63 every time, no joke, because it has been a good, steady, chronological rise for me in 1988, as God is my judge, the greatest year of my entire career, and 89 looks like it's going to be better. And another new album to add to as many, and Steely Dan, some, some of Steely Dan Yeah, some of the this? Steely Dan yeah. music is in that. And here you go, It Wasn't All Velvet by Mel Torme. I know you haven't seen the book yet, so we want to make sure we show it to you. Yeah, this, it's <laughs> just, out of here. it's funny. <laughs> you can, go ahead, go ahead, who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, yeah. that's why you're here, right? I'll tell you one, may I just say one yeah. brief thing? Mm -hmm. If you like the David Niven books, and I happen oh, to love them. Most the people did. Balloon and I think you'd absolutely love this book, only for this reason. Forget about me. I have interacted on a personal and professional basis with the likes of, and it's all here, anecdotes about Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw, Duke, Duke Ellington. Ellington, Marilyn Monroe, Ava Gardner, Marilyn Maxwell, Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland. I mean, it goes on and on. And I think that's what hopefully makes the book really interesting. It is a great book, and I want to thank you, Mel, thank for being you. here. Nice to meet Pleasure. you, and I mean that. You too. I am also a fan. I joined Harry Anderson's club. Thanks.